Hey there, everybody. This is the Bones and Tub Show. We are brought to you by no one in particular, because advertisements suck. Yeah, they do. We are brought to you, however, by Catherine, Marie Doherty, Evelyn, and Agris Girl, our three patrons at patreon.com forward slash bones and tubs. And we don't have, you know, anything else. We're not trying to sell you a mattress. We're not trying to tell you anything about beard oil or... No yeah. special food boxes or anything like that. No. You know, we're brought to you just like PBS by viewers like you. And so, uh, this is the Bones and Tub Show. The Bones and Tub Show. <laughs> Episode of Bones and Tubs coming at you at the end of January. The uh, cold month is cold today, very cold. After, it is. after being warm for a few days, it's fucking kind of gross too. It's like a uh, pelting me with ice water. Yeah, when I walked out of the house, this is nasty, you know. And then it got warm, and the other day, my my new dog Ziggy, he went outside, and uh, Tobin's left him out for way too long, and he got covered in mud, mm. like just literally covered in mud. Yeah. Looked like someone had taken a rototiller to my yard. Mm. In the form of dog paws. Dog paws. Dog paw tiller. Dog paw tiller. It's actually very effective. He was very tuckered out afterwards, though. It's a shame you can't direct it. Yeah, right. In a way, like maybe you wanted to till a part of your yard, but not yeah. that part. Well, now that part of my yard is destroyed. So I'm going to have to take measures to uh, uh, block it off. I can't think of the name of the tree. There was a tree that had... It was the same tree that they used the wood... For the uh, crown of thorns that they put on Christ's head. Hmm. So it's like a thorny tree. Oh, yeah. You should plant those on your fucking... Okay. I thought first you were talking about, like, hedge trees. No. Because you know that used to be a, a means of keeping... It was a natural fencing that people used to use. Because right. if you plant hedge trees next to each other, they'll, like, link together and create a natural barrier for livestock. My father-in-law's got that tree in his yard, and I was looking at it, and he was like, <laughs> that's a tree you pay attention to when you're mowing. Because, <laughs> I mean, these things are fucking... Oh, yeah. And they're not big, necessarily, but they are fucking sharp. Sharp. And they will... Sharp, they thorny motherfuckers. They don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. Was that intent... Not not to get uh, personal, was that intentional to have that tree in his yard, or was that just accidental? It might have been intentional. Hmm. Some sort of symbolic Christian thing, maybe? Uh, maybe. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. I don't know. He, he's got a mind that I wish I had. I'm trying to, like, learn from him as long as I can because he could, like, we go through these uh, walks, right? We're going, like, Gatlinburg and stuff, and he can just look at a tree and be like, oh, that's a, you know, such and such. That's such and such. You know? Yeah. I can't. You know, the doctor, actually, uh, he uh, he's well-versed in tree treeology. He is. Yeah, he's <laughs> that's a, not a word, but... <laughs> it is now. Yeah. Hey, he, welcome to 2018, by the way. I, I wanted to bring that in the show just for measure. Anyways, hate, trees. Hate, 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 hate. Yeah. Put the hate in. Yeah. But, uh, we used to, I remember the doctor and I, when we were, uh, neighbors, we would constantly do things together. We would go, like, walk in the nature, nature trails and stuff. And he'd tell me random plants that I could eat. Yeah. I never ate them, but. <laughs> He's good for that knowledge. Yeah. You could just imagine, like, everything's cool. The, uh, the world comes to an end. You're walking with the doctor, and then all of a sudden you, he's like, oh, it's fine, and then you die. Yeah. But it was an accident because most plants look alike. Speaking of the doctor, he, he didn't post a meme, but he messaged somebody else in it the other, this morning that I noticed, and I thought it was funny, and I wanted to talk about it. The meme starts off with two gentlemanly figures, and they're just conversed, like you see them talking. And it says how libertarians and conservatives talk to each other. Mm. And then the next picture is two people getting ready to have a knife fight, and it says <laughs> how a libertarian and a liberal uh, debate. Yeah. Right? And uh, it made me think, and I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I was like, I was like, here's the thing, though, like, that, and to an extent, it's true, but if you get into the nuts and bolts of ideology, hmm. I've gotten to throw down angry matches of anger with conservatives just as much as I have with liberals. <clears throat> right. Like, there was no, like, and that's being libertarian or whatever I am now. Right. Further down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no label. You get to a point where it's black flag, burn it all to the ground, and then you don't know what you are. Exactly. I've just been using the label of anarchist because it seems right. 
anarchist, but like non, but th- that's the problem. You have to differentiate because anarchy is uh, associated with violence. Oh, that's just the that's just the programming. I'm not. A, uh, yeah, I'm a non-violent anarchist by any means. Because like, they have that whole uh, non-aggression principle, you know. But like, you know, it, and the thing, like I said, it's it's. Uh, you know, it's true to an extent. Like initially speaking, when when you talk to a conservative, you it could be civil because. And I think I figured out what it was as I was looking at the meme. And you know, this is just a meme, but I'm breaking this shit down because I thought that it needed more conversation than just a simple meme. The thing is, is that at first, initially, you can have a dialogue with a conservative, right? Yeah, initially. Initially, once the door is open, though. And I'll, I think, uh... you, and you know what it is? You know why you can? Why? Because. Conservatives are less likely to browbeat you with terms and things to try to like Kafka trap you. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Right. Like they're not going to try to browbeat you with fucking <laughs> be calling you a racist or transphobic or anything like that. Mm-hmm. They're not going to do any of those things. No. They're less, they're less likely to browbeat. Like, and, and the thing is, and even when they do begin assaulting you, they more or less just call you stupid or naive. Right. Exactly. And then but, if you push that button a little bit further, they don't have anything past their talking points that they've been taught no exactly but in versus a liberal who will browbeat you with just they don't have a i mean there are liberals that have legitimate arguments i'll give them that but they're the ones that see more eye to eye with me than your classic sjw's they're just gonna they're just gonna fucking throw out their fucking trotsky-esque fucking terms to you every time it happens to try to like end the conversation there so you can't say anything else anymore Right. By their logic. <laughs> it's like, or like, um. Can't move past the Kafka trap. Yeah, or like this week, uh, Jordan Pete, like, there's been a big stink about Jordan Peterson had an interview on some British channel, right? Mm hmm. And the interviewer, first of all, like, she received a lot of misogynistic abuse after the interview <clears throat> because she, she was very aggressive with her interview tactic, right? But, like, and I don't, I'm not saying she deserved that. She didn't. She didn't deserve to be fucking. <clears throat> have the things that were said about her said yeah but if you go back and watch the interview that is a sh- she was it was sh- a shittily done interview by her because like okay for example like let's just take one thing he said like where he's like he's trying to explain like like uh uh, uh, uh gender roles and stuff like that right and biological gender roles yeah and he's like take lobsters for example and before he can even say anything else he's like so you're saying you want us all to be lobsters <laughs> Like, and that's, that was her interview style. Like, every time he said something, she would instantly, like, go on the attack, not let him, not let him describe in any discernible way what he was trying to get at, but just, like, take it to the most extreme, uh, uh, point of the, of the statement possible. Right. Excellent interview, I'm sure. Yeah. And then, like, putting words in his mouth, too. Yeah. Like, it was a shitty interview. Uh, I mean, like, I'm not, I wouldn't go out there and say some crazy shit about her, like some of these cocksuckers have. But, like, she did a really bad job of interviewing him. Yeah. I hope she's not happy with it. I hope it's a, in her mind is like, I could have done that. Oh, better. no, she probably saw it as a victory. Whore. Because she got the fucking trolls. She she fucking rustled some jimmies. Yeah. Like, you know, and that's the, and that's the shitty part is, is, unfortunately, amongst that crowd, it's easy to wrestle jimmies. You know what I mean? It's easy to ruffle them fucking... Mm. Yeah. See, for me, on the other hand, you you got to get me up pretty early in the morning to be wrestling my jimmies. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Like, I, I normally wrestle that. my jimmy at least three times a day, though. I don't. But I'm getting know. yeah, right. You wrestle your own jimmies. Yeah, but anyways, from time uh, to time. I mean, like, you got to get to the point with your ability to like take offense by things, like Neo in the first Matrix movie, like at the end. Where like they start shooting bullets at him, he just like he just like fuck off. No, yeah, and then they just stop him because that's the. He, I wonder too, you know, just to bring back the conversation we were having before we started the podcast. I wonder sometimes if it's all that easy, you know. You go through all this like, uh, let's just say like alchemical. You know how we're both like on the path, right? Yeah. To personal development, betterment. Mm-hmm. You're always searching for something right yeah what if when you finally reach the pinnacle of like alchemical research or you figured it out this this occult knowledge right Mm -hmm. if it's literally that easy it's like the story of the alchemist it shows you the true uh alchemical tale where it was all there in the beginning Mm -hmm. you had it all right there and it was just that easy yeah right 
fuck off. Exactly. Like, and that's the thing. Like, and, and it's not even like <sighs> some people would say, well, now you're just, you're, you're being a proponent of nihilism. No, I'm not. And that's the thing. I think the one of the greatest struggles of our, our existence and our lifetime right now is the fight against nihilism. Yeah. Cause I think like in, in all reality, that's what's happened to us. Like we make memes about tragedies. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's still those things where it's, some of the funniest memes are suicide. And how crazy is that? At least to me, anyway. I mean, everybody's like, different. How but. how bad has it gotten that we laugh at this shit now? It's got that uh, the the chef with the pizza. Oh uh, yeah, and it's yeah. like the chef, and it says me. The pizza has, says twelve gauge shotgun, and the oven says the roof of my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I fucking laugh my ass off. Yeah, it was solid. funny. But that is, oh, I think we've been corrupted by some form of nihilism. Now, where it came from, I don't know. Well, it's uh, I'm sure it all comes from the uh, social programmers that want us to be distracted and, and nihilistic. Because then we can't use our true God-given power, you know, God, creator, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But the brain, you know, they'd rather have us distracted. Sports. Yeah. Politics. Yeah, sports. Nihilism. Yeah. Like... Making making light of tragedy because you're an edge lord and you're fucking so cool. Yeah. Ooh, we, Ooh, wow. Yeah, Tide Pods mm. cleaning up the the people that should have been semen stains on the mattress anyway. You know, and that's the thing. That's like I I posted that meme on our Instagram where the world is just saying, "Can't you just be normal?" Yeah. And then it has America. It's from the Baba Duke. It's a scene in there where the mother, the kids, like screaming in the back seat. She's like, "Can't you just be normal?" And he's just screaming. Yeah. And it. Shows the kid, and it has the American flag <laughs> over his face, and it says "eating, <laughs> screaming, and eating deter- laundry detergent." Like yeah, that's—I yeah. mean, that's like the response. Apparently, that's they've where we're at. Been, they've even been dabbing that shit. Have you seen that? Yeah, oh, yeah I saw it. dabbed a Tide Pod. Christ on his throne. Right. I almost took a picture yesterday. I was wandering around uh, the Dollar General looking for a, a tea strainer for a purpose that doesn't involve tea. But yeah. we'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, and I saw the off-brand Tide Pod, and I was like, when times are hard. But I decided not to take the picture. Yeah. Because you know, it's off-brand. Yeah. Speaking of the Babadook and child screaming, I'd like to get into this story. We talked about it earlier in the week. Oh, yeah, with the Tamiflu girl. Yeah, from Daily Mail. Yeah. So if you go to Daily Mail, I'll post it on the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash bones and tubs. Uh, mounting Tamiflu fears, girl 11 saw the portal to hell and had to be hospitalized for three months after she was treated for the flu. Now, I was told about this story by one, uh, Mr. Care. Uh Uh-huh. He who cares. Yeah. So, this chick had the flu. Uh, I should go ahead and just stay before I get into this. This drug's already been banned in Japan. Yeah. And the Japanese are nothing if not... Uh, cautious. Cautious, yeah. So, when Lindsay, now 12, tested positive for a flu at a local clinic, they prescribed her Tamiflu immediately, but did not mention any possible neuropsychotic side effects. Three days into the five-day course, Charles' daughter started acting loopy. Mm-hmm. While his cousin was watching her, he called Charles, who was at work at a Kroger manufacturing plant, to tell him he needed to pick up Lindsay, who said she had things crawling all over her. And I mean who's not who's not been there? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. You're just about to rip your skin off because of all the little demons that are dancing around your skin. Yeah. I mean I yeah. we've all been there. Yeah. I get it. Exactly. So he came and picked her up and in the car, Lindsay spoke to him in a high pitched voice saying, Hi Daddy What he describes as real weird. Yeah. Like somebody out of the exorcist, Charles said. And then started screaming, oh my god, oh my god, daddy, get it off me, it hurts. She said she saw the portal to hell and she could hear the devil and he was going to resurrect my soul, Charles says. She begged she begged him to read to her from the Bible. Charles realized that her delusions were based on her greatest fears. So, she took this shit for three days. And then, uh, <clears throat> basically experienced hell. Yeah. So there's a few ways to look at this. The way that Daily Mail and the establishment would rather have you look at it is that she is a rare outlier, you know, that had a had a reaction to a drug. Yeah. Right. But I am automatically brought back to my conversation with Pastor Pastor Roberts. I've got no other name. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about there's some there's some scripture in the Old Testament that said beware of the spirit of pharmacia. Hmm. 
right? Which yeah. is what modern day pharmacy derives its name from. Yeah. It's strange. You think if that existed before, you probably wouldn't call it something. Yeah. Eh. Eh. Mm. Mm. Eh. <clears throat> but, you know, I mean, so you, you've either got a, a rare reaction to a perfectly safe drug that was vetted by the FDA, or you've got a group of psychopath, satanic uh, child fuckers at the top of everything that are just throwing random chemicals at us to see what happens. Well, I mean... You know, that goes back to the original idea that, um, you know, you should never use the state as an example of anything good. Yeah, no, they're not a pillar of morality, for no. sure. I mean, because, I mean, <clears throat> slavery was once legal. Just it's not, saying. It's not legal anymore? I mean, according to their laws, it's not. Huh. But, okay. you, you know what I mean? But at one time, it was completely... In, Completely fine right. to keep people against their will and make them do work. Hmm. So, okay, I got you. So not moral. No, not moral at all. So you can't use the state as a as a bellwether against morality. Didn't it's they? Uh, didn't they inject uh, African American Air Force people oh, with syphilis? With all oh, okay, syphilis. Yeah, the Tuskegee experiments. Uh, well, now they at least told them about it right before they did it. No, no, no. It was innocuous. They told. They didn't tell them anything. Oh, they just injected them with it and then watched their you know bodies yeah. deteriorate over time and infect other people with it just to see what happened. Just to see what happened. Okay, so the Tuskegee experiments that sounds like a good Google search, right? Yeah, hmm. I would look it up. <laughs> yeah. So, but once, but, but back to the FDA here. Okay, yeah. Sorry. How could the FB? Uh, you can't use the FDA. F. Ugh, ugh, road sodas. Yeah. You can't use the FDA as a good example of something safe or not. Well, okay. I mean, they did approve, I think, and this was a Joe Rogan, uh, the, the shill Joe Rogan, um, he, he had a show where they were talking, I can't, I think it was Ambilify was the drug they were talking about. Mm -hmm. It was the most prescribed drug in the United States. It might still be the most pre <laughs> prescribed <laughs> drug, uh, but it was at least the most prescribed drug, and, and they give it to people who are already fucked up, right? They're on yeah. antidepressants, but it's... It's, uh, the commercial is like a chick. She's like, you know, I have been diagnosed with clinical depression. And everything's all gray and sad and it's raining. And then, you know, but the drugs that they gave me for my clinical depression, drugs probably meaning more than one pill, mm -hmm. uh, aren't working. So my doctor talked about Ambilify. Guess what? Everything's colorful now. And she's running through a goddamn field and there's waterfalls and people are fucking and everything's great. Yeah. And uh, babies are happy, and puppies are, they've all got erections. Everything's awesome. Yeah. So this Ambilify shit that everybody should ask their doctor about is an antipsychotic. Yeah. You know? And it actually, if you listen to the uh, 48 seconds of side effects, will cause you to kill yourself, kill other people, dissociate, you know, all kinds of stuff. It's great. And great. And the, yeah. and the FDA yeah. was like, hey, fuck it. We're going to fucking do this. It's, it's neat. It sounds like a good idea, it's you know? It's super neat. Yeah. It's great because, uh, you know, it's an antipsychotic drug that's marketed as an antidepressant, um, an antidepressant stimulator. So they also talked about uh, Viagra, everybody's favorite blue dick pill, right? Yeah. You know how it was created? How's that? It was originally a blood pressure medication. And when they went through the testing... They were like, "How's the uh, what are the what are the blood pressure results on the on the patients? You know, in the double blind study, like, well, the blood pressure is you know up or down, but it's fucking terrible. They all have they all, <laughs> super hard dicks, super hard dicks that they can't get rid of. All right, so <clears throat> so the drug company hired a PR firm to create a disease called erectile dysfunction, and then they gave that way they they didn't have to throw the drug away. They were like, Man. well, hey, we got a drug for your dick for this new disease we created." Which, and the ultimate question is, is, so they created a disease called erectile dysfunction, right? Right. When in reality, like, you know, from everything I've gathered, you know, a good <laughs> diet and exercise yeah. will generally, if you're having problems with, with, <laughs> with, uh, with your penis, with your, pe <laughs> with your dick, if your cock can't get strong, yeah, then, uh, usually good diet and exercise can get your, your, you get your cock way strong again. Yeah. Super strong. Like fucking. You can't see it, but nah. I've got my fist, my whole arm I'm just to, like. Yeah, I'm here to tell you that it'll get it so hard it hurts. Yeah, because uh, if you know, you just you know do normal things. Guess what? I work out. Not take a fucking a pill to do it. Uh, here, here we here we are again bashing the establishment. But um, if you go to PubMed and you read a uh, any of the stories related to saturated fat or cholesterol, um, which they've already proven and admitted in the media that um, all of the low cholesterol, low fat diet. 
was based on lies yeah. that were funded by the sugar industry to cover mm-hmm. up the fact that heart disease and, and all these other things are caused by sugar. <clears throat> they uh, paid these scientists like $50,000 to shut the fuck up about that and say it was saturated fat and cholesterol. Yeah. The two things you need as a man for testosterone, the precursors are saturated fat and cholesterol. Yeah. So it's created a landfill of people that have super limp dicks. Super, super limp penises. Everybody drinking low fat yogurt has a, they're shooting pool with a rope, basically. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you super s- limp penises, their testosterone's low. You start, you start eating some eggs. You can't even, you can't even do like, and <laughs> I hate to sound like, I'm, I'm not one, I'm not a, I'm not, you know, crack a cold one with the boys, but you can't even do the one thing that biologically speaking, you were put on this earth to do. Right. I'm not saying that's your only purpose. But biologically it but is. But biologically speaking, that's your only fucking purpose. Because there are only two genders. <laughs> oh, got him. God. Got, got him. him. Got him. But I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, it's just proof positive over and over again that anything they tell you, you should just go ahead and assume that it's a lie. Yeah. And uh, do natural stuff. Like, like, do you think it's weird that... Eat eggs. Like, basically the entirety of Europe... I mean, even in an evil organization like the European Union, mm. has decided that fluoride wasn't good for people. Right. Where the fuck are you at, United <laughs> States? We're yeah. still figuring out ways to get lead out of the water. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, that's because, you know, we were cool with this. <clears throat> See, here's the thing. And this is where the only time I'll be like, hey, you know what? Maybe go- government intervention would actually fucking solve something. Like, take, for example, uh, DuPont, the chemical company. Yeah. Right? Uh, making fucking Teflon near a community, and just dumping their waste in the fucking groundwater supply right. and giving people cancer. Like, that's the one of the one times the fucking United States government probably should have stepped in and said, hey, maybe you shouldn't fucking dump chemicals into the goddamn groundwater. Well, that's why the government's never good at doing that, because the government never will. It's just like, um, you know how we had that serious problem with the, what was it, like, eagles or something? Their eggs, they, they were, like, super endangered because their egg shells and... We're getting we're getting uh, thinner. Right. Yeah. It was, like, due to DDT or something? Yeah. Well, DDT was one of the only things that could kill bed bugs, right? A third world scourge. Well, yeah. as we're getting scourged by the third world, bed bugs are coming back. Yeah. Because DDT is not legal anymore. Yeah. For consumer, uh, consumer or commercial use. However, anytime you drive by a cornfield... And they're spraying, you're inhaling DDT because they can still use it to spray in an area that's farm. But they can't use it anywhere else. No. So it's no problem to live in Preble County where they have, you know, corn, soybean fields everywhere and you just drive by and inhale the shit. You can fucking smell it probably here. Yeah. And you're not near a cornfield. But when they're fucking messing with the fields in the summertime, you can probably walk outside and be like, oh, goddamn. Yeah. What's that smell? Exactly. You're breathing in a chemical mm-hmm. that has been banned. Yeah. That made eggshells thinner. Yeah. I don't know, man. The, the government ball, is so goddamn. The ball eagles, you know. They're so goddamn ineffective. Uh, extremely ineffective. So not only are we going to suffer the consequences of whatever this is doing to our our eagle shells inside our bodies, but now you got to go. You got to worry about going to a fucking movie theater because you get a little fucking blood bug. Hey, hey, Jay. What are you yeah, doing? <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry. Let me go in your house and just recreate myself over and over again. Yeah, and then suck on your family. Yeah. I want to suck all on all of them. Mm. I want to suck their juices it's a out shame of them. Shame they don't have a bug that sucks your dick in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, oh, shit. You know, they want to use that argument like, uh, I forget who it was. I listened to somebody talk about their experience with psychedelics where they were high on, uh, I think it was DMT or maybe, mm-hmm. uh, fuck. It was Iowa, or, no, Ibogaine. Yeah. And they had a conversation with mosquitoes, right? <clears throat> Not individual mosquitoes, but the hive mind yeah. of the mosquitoes. And they were like, he was like, man, why, why you guys gotta bite us? <laughs> man, it sucks. Yeah. And mosquitoes were like, I'm sorry, the hive mind was like, uh, you've got all that blood. Like, <laughs> quit being a dick. You yeah. Know? We're just taking a little bit. Yeah. And you, most of the time, you don't even feel us. Yeah. He's like, what about malaria? Yeah. You're spreading all these diseases. And he's like, you think we like malaria? <laughs> Fuck no, man. Malaria is a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, given that logic, sure, you've got plenty of blood to give out, but, like, what about all this semen I got? Exactly, Why can't yeah. nature create a bug that sucks my dick while I'm asleep? Yeah. Well, coming soon to a bedroom near you. Yeah. 
I mean, we already got like sex. It, <laughs> Everybody's been talking about sex bots here right. lately. What if it looked like a scorpion instead of a stinger and had a flashlight on the tip of its tail? You know, like you know? I've, I've heard a lot from the insings. Is it insing? Insoles and the megatows, men going their own way. Okay. And the incels talking about how like we don't have to, we don't need females anymore because we got sex bots coming our oh, way. Yeah. That's a an episode in Futurama if you haven't been paying attention. Yeah. You see that one? Yeah, I've seen that one. Like uh, where they warn against like you don't go with the sex box. Like. Yeah. Where they're like you're such and such. Like what happened on Earth? And they're like, oh bro, let me tell you. Yeah. And it just shows like an empty planet. Like what happened? Well, the sex bots came and nobody had use for women anymore because sex bots will fuck you, yeah. but they won't complain. But so you have that now. Now we have to try to convince people to uh, have sex with other people again for reproduction purposes. Or pleasure. Fuck it. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's fun. It's, it's See, I can, I can say right now that I have no use for a sex bot because they're clunky. And it's like a, it's like a, if you look at the history of transportation, I'm sure it's like a wagon. Yeah. Who, who the fuck wants a wagon? Yeah. But give it ten years. And give I'm, it, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're driving in a Bugatti. Yeah, <laughs> you got a Bugatti. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no! That was one of the better things that I heard the shill Joe Rogan talk about in one of his stand ups. But he was like, you know, you got to think about it both ways. Everybody's worried about what men are going to do with sex bots, but think about the fucking the poor UPS driver that shows up to deliver a package to some single lady that lives alone. And he opens the door. She's wearing a nightie, which normally would be cool. You know, yeah. she's wearing some lingerie. But he looks around the corner, or through the crack of the door, and there's just a team of fucking black robots that are standing there jacking their dicks off. <laughs> you know, because he had to put them in pause mode while she answered the door. <laughs> just a team of fucking steel erections ready to hit every hole yeah. she had. Well, I saw recently that uh, there was something in Europe about uh, classing uh, men who couldn't find a mate as a disability. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do you know? Fuck it. I mean, yeah, right. What else? Yeah, I'm sure you're disabled because you're you're so abhorrently terrible that you can't find someone else that wants to fuck you. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> I mean, this isn't going to mean anything to the the listeners of the podcast unless they went to school with us. But Loretta Ford's got kids. Yeah, I saw her at Walmart the other day. Yeah, I saw. Her, I've seen. I've seen her a couple months ago. Yeah, man of false. I mean, kids. you got to be pretty fucked up to not get a dick in your pussy, I'm just saying. Yeah. Or vice versa. Either way. Put your dick in a pussy. Right. Or in a butthole. Or anywhere else. <laughs> like, Anywhere if you, you can't want. find anyone from your from your species... To offer you some friction? Some friendly friction? Some friendly friction? Then you have a fucking problem. You need to, like, focus your attention back inward and realize... Right. That's... Like, see, hey, maybe I shouldn't wear a gay-ass fucking fedora or a trilby anymore because it looks dumb. Right. And nobody wants to fuck you because of it. I guess. I mean, you know. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm already on the uh, search to the universe, you know? Yeah. I'm experimenting with various, various methods. I'm, uh... I'm using the law of attraction. Yeah. You know, I'm reading a lot of books. Mm-hmm. And I've already got a kid. Yeah. I've got a wife. Me too. You yeah. know? But what are these people doing? I am I mean, I always consider myself an abhorrent monster, but I have a kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we both are. I, yeah. Really. I mean. We're just terrible human beings. We just sit in a room with people that are trying to have polite conversations, and all we're doing is, like, digesting food. Yeah. You know, I'm barely better than an ape. Like, it, and yeah, more or less. Like, I am only one step away from, like, everybody having a nice, polite conversation, and all of a sudden I bust in, knock some shit off the table, and just start vigorously masturbating, masturbating. in front of them. Masturbating like, with your own vomit. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. you fuck. know what I mean? Like, I mean, fuck. Shit's heavy, bro. I don't so, know. If, if you're an, in, like, I guess this is shots fired at incels and I, I, MGTOWs. I don't know. McGinta. I don't know what any of those things McGinta. mean. Oh. You have to look on Reddit. Okay. So, incels are people who want a mate. But nobody is willing to fuck them. Okay. In cells. In cells. Okay. Uh, it's uh, what's it called? Involuntary celibacy. That's the whole thing. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So they're celibate, but they're not celibate by their own volition. It's because nobody wants to fuck them. Anybody else that was annoyed with any of these terms or the fact that these things exist should also listen to the last episode where we talked about the cure for everything, and that's legalizing prostitution. Yeah. Because if they got to go fuck a paid pussy, then we wouldn't even have to listen to their complaining. Yeah. And then Macatows. Uh, men going their own way. It's men who have just decided they're not even trying anymore. So it's the step after incels. To me, that sounds like the step right before you suck a dick. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> like you might not like. Oh, man, I don't know, man. Women, man. You know, I just can't even can't even do it anymore, man. They're just crazy. They're all crazy. And you're like, oh, I know, right? I get it back to Shaggy. He was sucking it yeah, better. A couple minutes later, they're like, you know, I think I'm taking a break from women. Next thing you know, they're like thinking about sucking a dick. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's a video of them on X and XX from a Craigslist. See, and that's the thing, though. I think we get with a man, men, uh, men going their way. I think it expanded into the fact that like it's just a step beyond incels. Incels are like mm, nobody will fuck me, yeah, right. And then <clears throat> MGTOWs are like nobody will fuck me, so fuck everybody, right? Like they can't get it anyway. Incels can't either, so they've decided that they're just going to be bitter pieces of shit. That want to fucking bitch and moan and talk about the end of Western civilization. There's a great solution, and I know that there are some people that are going to be upset by this, but I, I fully believe it. And you know, everything boils down to consent, right? Mm-hmm. Human consent, human thought are yeah. the two most important things in the in the in the uh, creation. Yeah. You can always kill yourself. Oh, don't say that. Why not? Because the suicide. I know it's not a good thing. I've been touched by it myself. It's not a good thing, but no. let me just say it. If you're not having a good run at things, and you clearly you're just fucked up, there's no other option. And apparently you have nobody that loves you. Start over. Try it again. I guess. I don't, I'm not advocating that. I'm not either. I don't want anybody to fucking I'm kill themselves. Saying. For real. I, I, I can't. Hitler? See, and then you throw a curveball at me. Well, you and said like, anybody in it. it damn me. it. You hit me with the fish hook. Damn it. I, I guess, was almost ready to let it go until I you guess said was, nobody. I, I mean, I guess in a way that was quality bait <laughs> in the long sense of it. But I'm a masturbator. <clears throat> yes. It comes down to it. So, it's hard to say. But here's the thing, and it, it, I guess I could agree with you to an extent, because like, <clears throat> anybody that just like, any white person... Or any, yeah, any white person talks about how terrible white people are and da 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 da, and just like they're the fucking scourge of the universe. Tell I'm, yourself. yeah, I'm in that you know back to fucking uh, enemy at the gates where I just slide a pistol across the table and I say we want to avoid red tape. Yeah, get rid of the red tape. Yeah, fuck it. I mean seriously. I mean, I mean more. I mean okay, so I guess I could agree to an extent if you're it just. It shouldn't be a thing of of passion. You know, everybody gets upset. Super upset. People go through shit. I get that, right? Yeah. But if there's a if there's a silver lining to those dark clouds, just power through. I think a, a lot of this the the negative connotation of suicide comes from the fact that everybody doesn't realize they're 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 so deep in this societal and governmental mind control that they don't realize that they have the power to change everything in their lives just by simply changing their thought process. Yeah. If they realize the amount of power that they have, and they quit shitting on themselves. And shit on everybody else and blaming society for their own pro. Like, if you've got some hang-ups and you've got some problems, like, you're just a <laughs> shitty person. Right. Like I said, the, with the incels and the... Yeah. <laughs> you gotta... And and, pe- and nobody wants anything to do with you. You are completely, like, you are detracting and everybody doesn't want anything to do with you. You are making yourself a, 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 a magnet that you pushes need, everything away. Yeah, you need to fucking turn... All that perspective back in words and figure out what the fuck is wrong with yourself. Did you just say N words? Oh, right? I'm sorry. No. I'm, this road soda's got me feeling stupid as fuck. But uh, you, <coughs> need to, you need to focus that shit back in words and figure out what the fuck is wrong with you. Yeah. Seriously. Because, like, I know people that are complete and utter assholes to have friends. Okay? Yeah. People who generally, like, love them and would suffer if they did if they didn't walk this earth anymore yeah so by that logic if there's people like that then there's hope for anybody for sure but one of the things that i'm still trying to grapple with as my as i search for the alchemical truth of turning lead into gold which is the lead of my mind yeah um there's a saying that is in this uh master key to success book right and mm-hmm. it pervades i mean it's everywhere but it's just in this book that i've just read it but once the world like, it basically boils down to say that there are two worlds, mm-hmm. and most people don't know about the first world. We live in the second world, which is the external. Yeah. The first world, the most important world, is the inner world, the universe. Mm-hmm. And once you change anything in the universe, it has to change in the exterior. And people will say, like, uh, some of these cats I watch, Jeff Berwick and uh, some other people that do vlogs, they talk about it. Like, you can even see it in their videos where they, they are... You know, complaining about this or that, 
you know, and that's where I'm at. Like, you know, we're complaining about the government. Yeah. Most of the time, it's what I do. Yeah. But if I change something inside me that needs to be changed, it won't affect me anymore. And everything to me will be bliss. Like fucking, yeah, in the Matrix. Yeah. Like, One more time. I'm so much closer. Like brow, like people trying to browbeat you and Kafka trap you will, yeah. will have no effect on you anymore. Hand up, bullets down. It doesn't trigger you anymore. Yeah. That's Shoot the key. back at that Agent Smith. Yeah. Why should it trigger you? Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. That's what we need to do here. We, we talked about it before, the uh, year of 2018. The next time somebody slays you with some type of uh, racist or some sort of a sexist comment, or you're worried about being called racist or sexist, throw the hand up like Neo. Yeah. Stop the bullet and tell him to go suck a fucking dick. I will not be browbeaten. No. Into compliance. You have the power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. I just don't remember what we were talking about. I have no idea either. Sometimes you gotta pee, you know? Yeah. Make a big old hot piss. Normally we just piss ourselves, but I didn't bring a diaper today. Mm. I don't know about you. That's unfortunate. No, I didn't bring one either. It is you know, what it is. I try to buy Depends when they're on sale, so yeah, just there depends. wasn't there was no sale. It just depends on and the sale. It depended on the sale. Right. And it wasn't there. So I had to actually, you know, use bladder control, which, you know, I guess that's whatever. <clears throat> I can guarantee that we were probably talking about something to do with... Uh, I think we're talking power or fuck the government because those are really the things that I live about. Yeah, I think they were talking. I think we were talking about how the FDA is a bunch of skeeving whores. Yeah, but uh, um, which it's the government. Fuck yeah, the government. Here we so, are. Yeah, right. No problem. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I do remember. Uh, I think uh, you know, and a lot of people might like poo poo the fact that you know, like uh, some people I'm sure love the fact that we that we bash the government. Yeah. But some people are probably like, really, come on, give it a break. Let me tell you, when you watch two family members die slowly from cancer, maybe not even the cancer, maybe it was the uh, the treatment that they got that killed them. Yeah. Because that's more common. But <clears throat> my aunt was specific because I remember right before she died, and it wasn't quick. No. Uh, let me tell you, watching somebody seizure to death over a 24-hour period will fucking make you hate the government. Yeah. But she had this drug that she just got approved for, which maybe would have gotten rid of the problem if it had been quicker. But it got approved for inmates before her. Hmm. Was a interferon treatment. Fuck the government. And the thing that made you slow down on getting that was the government. Government regulation. You know, here's my question is, is like, and this I guess goes round, round robin to marijuana legalization. Right. Like, so, okay, why is CBD, like, so heavily monitored? <laughs> When in reality, it has the possibility to not only help with cancer, but also with uh, epilepsy and people who have seizures and which, you know, the epilepsy and people have seizures. I don't know why I said both because that's the same thing. But it sounds good because you use more than one thing. That's or, why That's why our uh, episodes always have three titles because it just feels right. Yeah. Or cerebral palsy. Right. Or anything else. Any number of things. Any neurological disorders that helps and yet... And we've seen it proven time and time again, and yet the FDA doesn't budge on it. Well, it's because there's it's some ridiculous amount of money. But there's multiple reasons, I feel like. They, first of all, you need billions of dollars to get a drug approved, right? Second of all, they don't want you to be healthy. They want you to be sick. As I say, because theoretically, you could make billions of dollars on this, right? I mean, maybe. The fact is that they want to patent it, though. You can't patent a natural thing. That's true. You can't patent something that... Like, you could literally go out and grow, There's and then it takes minimal processes to make it. Right. There's different mm -hmm. levels, too, because some people... You think about this. Now this is going to be a, a Bones fucking spiral out of control off. We're going to try and stay on topic. Okay. But to go back to the original conversation that we had before the podcast about will and, and human thought, think about it this way. 9-11, right? Mm -hmm. March... I think it was March, March of 2001, right? Yeah. They had a show come out called The Lone Gunman. Uh -huh. It was a spinoff of The X-Files. Spinoff of The X-Files. They had the same hackers that were in The X-Files. Uh -huh. The first episode, the pilot, was uh, a plane had been loaded with a bomb, and it was going to fly somewhere into something and blow up. So this cat and his government informant get on the plane, and they're trying Ooh. to find it with their bomb sniffers. They can't find it anywhere. <clears throat> well, their hackers on the ground alert them that uh, 
it's not a bomb. It's the fact that the plane has been hijacked. It's actually being drone flown into uh, the trade t- the trade towers. Really? You never watched that? I never watched the episode. No, I won't be able to say that tomorrow. Yeah. I got it on hmm. YouTube on some clip, but I'll take a look at it. Yeah. So then they have to hack, and and what's crazy is at the end of the episode. It ends with uh, them taking control of the plane and pulling it up just in time to knock into the antenna of the trade t- the trade tower. Huh. Now this was in March of two thousand and one. So how many millions of people watched that show, and what did their brains do? They thought about planes into the World Trade Center. Yeah, they they garnered this this thought energy, the psychic energy, right? And then in September, yeah. I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, they they uh, got rid of those buildings, you know. I don't even think there were planes, honestly. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, yeah. the psychic energy was garnered, so it's like they want to use the psychic energy for whatever purpose. Yeah, that's why we have mass media or TV programming. Yeah, they call it programming for a reason. Yeah, a program. Run it. I don't fucking know. All I know is I haven't had cable or regular TV in over four years, and I'm feeling pretty fucking healthy. Yeah. I've been without Sans cable television for a while now. I watch what I want to watch. Yeah. We're still programmed, but it's on our own. Yeah. It's on our own terms. So it makes it feel like we have more freedom. I feel like I'm in control. Yeah. And the only commercials I watch are on YouTube. Yeah. Because fuck YouTube Red. Yeah. Fuck YouTube, really. Yeah, in all reality, we're getting to the point now, like... We made more money off DTube than we have off YouTube. Yeah. We're already, uh... The specifics don't matter to the common <laughs> folk. Yeah. It's not anything great, but it is more than YouTube, which was nothing in particular. Yeah, because, you know, they're shitheads. Do you follow our analytics? Uh, on the website, yeah. So I see what we're fo- what we're getting... It's going up. Yeah. It's good. Which is great. We get more people listening. We had comments from people I'd never heard of before. I know. Which is great, too. Hey, speaking of which, out there, just shout out to all those commenting. That's great. And that's awesome. And yeah, we I, don't call for it enough, but we yeah. love we love talking to you people. And the just, Bones and Tubbs Nation. Just to get some comments flowing out there, I'm going to put out this uh, asking asking for a friend tip. No, it's for me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> a friend wanted to know. Hey, because hey, uh, we were talking about it before the show. If anybody has a, a very... Um, cleanly way i just started using activated charcoal as a toothpaste Mm. because it makes your teeth white and it doesn't taste like anything it makes makes you look like you're a goddamn fucking orc (laughs) coming straight out of mordor man flesh but um if anybody has a very clean way of taking care of cleaning that up i'd love to hear it i I remember the way i do it it's not polite Mm. But I finger fuck the sink while I'm uh, brushing my teeth. Oh, okay. My opposite hand. See, I don't want to finger fuck my sink. My I don't want to finger fuck my sink. Well, I mean, let me know if you see it and I don't see it. Like, yeah. Comment. So if anybody wants to comment on how they clean up their activated <laughs> charcoal mess, because it looks like fucking hell. It looks like hell's coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Like um, I'm trying to think of a good example of just like this black ooze just seeping out of your fucking gob. Yeah. But uh, that's the only way I could use to describe it. It's fucking horrible. I'll tell you something else you should do. Um, if you if you do go to Walmart, I'm sure you do. Yeah, buy some fucking coconut oil. And do some oil pulling. See, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that because I thought like, what's the next step? Because like, I used the non fluoridated toothpaste, yeah, which is great. I started using the charcoal to keep because the non fluoridated toothpaste, though it freshens my breath, keeps my teeth clean, does not help with. I drink a lot of coffee, right? And smoke cigarettes, yeah. So it doesn't help with the stains as much. So I started using activated car- charcoal, and believe it or not, I'm, mind you, I'm not getting paid by the big charcoal. Nobody. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there big charcoal? <sighs> Maybe. Well, fuck, I don't know. I wouldn't know. I haven't gotten a check in the mail. But um, I'm not getting paid by big charcoal, but it does work. Yeah. Um, now the I'm getting your teeth oil. wider. I watched several videos on YouTube, and this is purely to, to prove that Bones and Tubbs are both narcissists. We're not worried about the, uh, you know, the other benefits. We're worried about aesthetics. Because well, we're narcissistic. See, no, but they say that there's all kinds of benefit from coconuts in general because the oil will pull out toxins from your mouth. Hmm. And, you know, and I thought, oh, okay. Toxins, we're, that's... Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like those foot pads yeah. you know, that, are, that were bullshit that pull toxins out of your feet. But I believe it now because I saw an ad yesterday online for um, Crest Mouth Detoxify. And it uses uh, 
derivatives from coconut oil. Okay, so basically, the idea there is, is some. There is some. Now, I've <sighs> listened to a podcast once about oil pulling, and more or less the conclusion. And mind you, the podcast was. Uh, it's co-hosted by a doctor. Yeah, doctor. By a, a real doctor. She's a general practitioner. Mm-hmm. Um, and she came to the conclusion that oil pulling has the same effects as using, uh, at least in the sense where you're cleaning your mouth out, as using mouthwash. Right. And may be less harmful than mouthwash. Yeah, well, the idea with mouthwash is that it kills germs, but it kills the good ones. So it also yeah. fucks up your, your first line of defense. So I think the next step is probably oil pulling. <laughs> oil pulling for the win. And I'll yeah. tell you the way that i found that works the best is uh, not only, like, does it whiten your teeth, right? But the lauric acid has something in it that's antimicrobial, so it kills bacteria germs some even say it kills precancerous cells now does it leave the good stuff behind though yeah it doesn't oh, fuck with okay. the old shit but another thing it does when they say it pulls toxins out there was an article from some mainstream publication i read a couple years ago where it talks about your risk of heart disease and all these other cancers and stuff yeah based on your oral health exactly and that's the thing where i come back to is like <clears throat> keeping track of your oral health possibly could be one of the most health like body positive things you can do right it has nothing to do like you said we're, we talk about the aesthetic mm. it has to do even with, though we're both narcissistic we're fuck. both narcissistic motherfuckers AF, yeah but um it oral health like basically every big disease comes from starting with your oral health yeah like keeping your mouth clean keeping your teeth clean right stuff like that so i've become more conscious of that basically but, you um, just buy like a tub of coconut, coconut oil. oil and then you take i take like a gobbing spoon of it, mm-hmm. put it in my mouth, and I swish it for 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then they spit it out. Don't spit it in your drain. Yeah. Because uh, coconut oil solidifies at 72 degrees. Yeah. That's the melting point, mm-hmm. roughly. So 70, 72 degrees, it'll turn solid, and you don't want to clog your fucking drain up. Spit it in the trash or spit it on someone you don't like, whatever. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> be sure you don't swallow any of it. And then just spit it out. Well, I mean, even after that, you don't want to swallow any of that. You want to go yeah. brush your teeth immediately. Yeah. Like just to, I just brush my teeth. So you it. pull first, and then you brush your teeth. But I don't use toothpaste. You just use charcoal? I don't use anything. When I when I oil pull, I just tooth water, toothbrush water. Okay. And I brush, so and I do you do it. oil pull every day? No. You just I should, do it. I should do it every day. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube of uh, just the whitening because I'm a narcissist. Now, but in 30 days, their teeth were crazy white. I wanted to ask about one more thing, and I know this is like, but it's a podcast, so you guys are listening to us just converse back and forth about things. Yeah. And I've been reading up on a little bit, and that was <laughs> apple cider vinegar. Right. Oh, it's great. Okay, so what is the, like, health thing with apple cider the vinegar? The fact, the like, the matter with that is uh, it goes back to the old school, right? Mm-hmm. We always, like, kind of politely joke with each other or other people about, like, how hardcore our fucking you know, grandparents or the older generations were. Well, a lot of the reason that I think that was not only the fact that they just were more physically active, but they Mm -hmm. also ate fermented foods. So if you eat fermented foods, there's a benefit. And they found that, I think the, I'm going to fuck this up. There's some kind of a thing. It's, it has to do with like charcoal, right? Mm -hmm. There's some kind of chemical that's in both uh, charcoal and in some of the uh, fermented foods, and not like the commercially available fermented foods because they're all pasteurized, but um, like kombucha tea mm-hmm. or apple cider vinegar. Things with live cultures in them. Live cultures. Yeah. It replenishes the gut biome, and they've, they've again, PubMed or any other web research will show you that your gut biome has everything to do with everything else in your life. And that's the thing, like, and that's kind of like we're talking about oral health <laughs> being a keystone for health for the rest of your body. Right. Um, gut health and your flora, your flora, right? Yeah. Your gut flora is key, a keystone oh, to your health as well. It's the most and important I, thing. I will wholeheartedly and completely and utterly agree with that statement because if you do actually look out for your gut health, not only does your, like, your digestive health, that not only does it help you feel better yeah. all the time, um, it also, like, Makes you have more energy. Yeah, for sure. Like, I definitely noticed that. Well, I've been paying attention a lot because of the baby. But um, one of the most important things about uh, breast milk yeah, um, is the fact that, and I listened to this on the Shill 
uh, Joe Rogan's podcast when he had Dr. Rhonda Patrick. You should you guys should check her out on YouTube, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, or I think it's Twitter and Instagram at Found My Fitness. But she has done all the fucking heavy work and all this because she just had a baby. Yeah. But breast milk and some um, formulas now are going towards uh, formulas with added oleosaccharides. Mm-hmm. I think it's what it's called. But breast milk has like 200 or 300 plus oleosaccharides, and these are sh- sugars that the human body can't digest. They're mm-hmm. made specifically for gut bacteria. Yeah. And they've found that these, it's like, uh, I don't even know the name. It's infant something gut bacteria. Mm-hmm. But if you feed these things and allow them to, to thrive, um, they decrease inflammatory markers. They uh, prevent asthma. They prevent yeah. allergies. So if you have allergies or asthma, punch your mom because she gave you some fucking shitty formula. Yeah. You know? I guess. I mean, that's what it is. But uh, I think that about wraps it up. <sighs> yeah. I kind of ended it with a nice little like uh, health rant, corner there. A little health rant. A little health rant. Yeah. But uh, we'd like to thank you all for listening. Hey, we love those comments. I love nothing more <laughs> than hearing a notification on my phone and seeing somebody commenting. Yeah. And, you know, saying some great stuff. It's also the cure for erectile dysfunction. Yeah. I guarantee you, it gives me one of those, one of those steel jobs. It gives me a chub every yeah. time. So thank you all for listening. Uh, I'm going to plug my book real quick. You need to. Uh, go to Amazon, S. James Imhoff, um, The King's Fire, uh, Prophecy in Flame. It's book one. Uh, it's been out for a couple months now. Uh, if you haven't bought it yet, go buy it. Now listen, before I don't want to interrupt your plug, but oh, I'm no. going to because I'm an asshole. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've been trying to get him to do an audible for mm-hmm. this. I've been I've been talking shit and trying to make him feel like less of a man. <laughs> but he is so fucking cock strong because the the muse is just ethereal and whispering yeah. in his ear to already write book two. He's already working on some other stuff. Yeah, and I'm I'm a shitty person. Yeah. I haven't read the whole book, but I'm going through it right now. Do you, do you, are you enjoying it? I fucking enjoy it. Yeah. I read, I enjoyed, uh, the part in, in this, I read the unedited one. Yeah. Or the one that you gave me, the mm-hmm. physical copy. Yeah. I really enjoyed that, and I read a lot of it, and I'm reading it now, and it's like different. It's powerful. Yeah. Hashtag power. Power. So, if you haven't bought it, check it out. I, I mean, What's like, the price? I mean, it's cheap. Twelve ninety nine. Right. Hey, you can buy a, a Kindle copy for, uh, Three ninety nine. That's how I did it because I'm a piece of shit. I, I don't. But once, hey, I can't. I can't slight you for buying a Kindle copy. Of next it. week, fine. though, when we go, we're going to uh, be recording from a bookstore in Middletown. Mm-hmm. Crab Apple Books. Yeah, check them out. But we're going to be doing a podcast recording from there, and we're going to have a guest, um, Satan himself, mm-hmm. will be on the podcast. <laughs> Perhaps another person, but he doesn't give me his nickname yet, so I don't want to give it out. But yeah. Uh, we'll be doing it from there. He's going to be doing a book signing from there also. So If you have books. I'm yeah. going to buy some more so people can buy some. Hopefully, I can get them here by next week. Hopefully. I'm going to buy like them today. Two-day shipping. Yeah. You buy your own shit. Hey, uh, innocuous plug because apparently, <coughs> I mean, we do we do have a tie with Amazon. So I can say, hey, I have Amazon Prime and I fucking love it. Oh, no shit. I can't imagine a world without Amazon Prime, even though... I will give them a little shit. They raised the price by two dollars. God a month. damn it! And it's like, fuck, come on, man. But hey, you know, still in all reality, it's worth the deal. It totally is worth it because I don't even use it to its full potential. You just told me about Electric Dreams, and I've been watching that, and that shit's fucking crazy. Fucking crazy! Hey, check out Electric if Dreams. Yeah, Amazon yeah. Prime. Watch that shit because fuck, it will fuck your brain. If you wake up at three in the morning to feed a baby and you can't go back to sleep, and you're like. Should I jerk off and try not to wake up my wife, or should I <laughs> watch Electric you know, Dreams? I'm yeah. gonna watch Electric Dreams. But uh, hey, we'd like to thank you all for listening. We'd like to uh, thank Ryan Simpson for letting us use his music on the Got show. Got him! Got him this time. Uh, welcome to 2018 again. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and we hope you have a good week. Fight the power, motherfuckers. We love you. We really do. crazy cause the world is getting dim I fell in love with a girl but she says we're just friends I thought I was a boy it turns out I'm a man gonna get me a canoe gonna row to Japan
shit Whether I crawl or whether I sit But I'm still rowing Gonna make it someday Gonna be free Gonna be okay I've begun to think lately It's cause I won't stop complaining I am a voodoo doll And the world is the pin I've got a third eye Growing out of my chin I think I've gone crazy Cause I'm fucking confused Today I woke up hanging from the same